Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bing, I'm a photo and video maker. In today's video, let's talk about monitors. So as a photo and video maker, a good computer monitor is very important for us. You want it to be big for the efficiency, you want to be color accurate for the professional project. But there are so many on the market, so how to choose one to fit your need? Actually, I did my research. But it's such a tangled knowledge system about monitors. It's just such a mess. So I delete this academic speech and this is the second take. But I will do another video all about monitors. In today's video, let's keep things simple. All right? Basically, there are four types of monitors you can find on the market. So there are just four types of LCD panels using different technology. The first one is TN. It has high responding speed. It has high refresh rate, but the color and the viewing angle on it is very poor. They're mainly used for gaming monitors. And there's IPS. The color is great, the viewing angle is great, and the most 10-bit monitors are using IPS panels. But they are a little bit expensive and it has the worst backlight bleed problem. VA panel. It's a good balance between TN and IPS. It has high contrast, which means the black on it is pure and deep. So it's good for watching uh, video content on it. It has less backlight bleed issue and the color performance on it is better than the TN panel. There is a new member called the QLED or QLED. There is LED in its name, but it's still an LCD with quantum doll technology. It has the best display performance, so I believe it's the best choice for the digital content creators. The only problem is it's even more expensive than the IPS panels. So if you don't care about the size or the resolution, go buy a 1080p IPS panel. They are affordable nowadays and you won't go wrong with it. Since I want an Ultra QWHD resolution, I can only find this VA panel one that is affordable to me. This one is from Samsung, size is 24 inch, it has 2440 by 1440 resolution, it has 3900 to 1 contrast, very good for watching video content on it, it has 4 millisecond responding time, it supports AMD FreeSync, the max refresh rate up to 75 hertz, which makes it a quite good gaming monitor. It has 16.7 million colors, which means it's an 8-bit display panel. As a photo or video maker, we all love 10-bit. Like my Canon camera shoot 14-bit CR2 files, my BMP 64K shoot 12-bit RAW. But when you bring them back to an 8-bit monitor, However, it's not that bad as you think, as long as it's color accurate. So I recommend you to get a monitor calibrator like a Spider X Pro or something like this. About the color gamut, I didn't find any information on their website. I'll make a test once I get my monitor calibrator. It has picture in picture and picture by picture function. It allows you to input two video signals simultaneously. It has two HDMI and one DP input and one 3.5 mm audio jack output. It has very thin bezels, which is very nice. The tilting angle is from negative 1.5 to 15 degrees. And there's no height adjustment, such a bummer. But it has VESA mounting point to allow you to use monitor arms. The build quality is so-so, it's too plasticky, and the tilting adjustment is not smooth at all. Overall, it's a qualified monitor for content creators, and the price is sweet. But should you get such a wide monitor like this one? From my experience, you should. Yeah, it's kind of too wide, you really need to move your head to look from edge to edge and even the viewing angle is great but there's a lot of uh, reflections on the far side due to the big size but when you sit back and starting watch a movie on it you feel that all worth it but hey let's get back to content creation purpose in davinci resolve you get a max satisfying experience it's wide enough so you can see more timeline details at the same time you can have two decent size monitoring windows side by side. Come to photo editing, it get a little bit tricky. If you can remember all the hotkeys, then it's great. If you can't, 
that would be a little bit annoying because you have to always look at the two bar and the layer sections all the time. You know, they're at the two edges. So there's some sports going on there. Beside the video editing, the thing I love the most is because it's wide enough so that I can put the Chrome next to the OneNote. So when I write my script, I can do the research without minimize any windows. Even it has 3440 by 1440 resolution, you won't feel any difference in sharpness between a 1080p monitor because it has almost the same pixel size and the pixel density. It's not like you swapped from the same size 1080p to the same size 4K monitor, which the pixel density got much higher. Okay, the summary of this monitor. The build quality is not that good. There's no speaker, no USB hub. For the color performance and the price, it's a mid-range monitor. But benefit from the size, you get your efficiency improvement for the content creation and the great video watching experience. And there's one more thing based on my experience. You need to power it up with a better graphic card, like uh, better than the GTX 1060. Okay, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. If you found it's been useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'll update the color information about this monitor once I got the Spider X Pro monitor calibrator. See you next time. Bye.